last episode, we removed window glass and their regulators. I needed to get the regulators plated, and you'll see them in just a couple of minutes. Plating turned out to be far more frustrating than it should be. After my second encounter with these guys, I knew I needed to find a new plater. And I learned a lot about different kinds of plating in the process. So brew yourself a cup of joe, or pop open a cold one, and let's talk shop. Right around the time I needed a plater, I asked a local restoration shop, you know, who do you recommend? Gave me a couple names. And I asked him about a guy that was just down the road from me, and he said, uh, yeah, he's going to try to see what he can get away with, with you. You know, and I was thinking, what the hell does that mean? So I went to this guy that was near me anyway, because he had some good Yelp reviews. And I'm thinking, yeah, let's give this guy a shot. So I bring in my first batch, you know, and it wasn't a lot of stuff. There was a couple of things I needed, like, right away. So I'm like, all right, this is a small batch, but let's just get it going. And I uh, brought it to him, and, you know, I showed the guy, he's this old guy, you know, Henry or Howard, Harold, one of the H names. And he looks at my stuff and goes, 250 bucks. You know, and I'm like, is that, is that a lot? lot? But I had him do the job. He said it'd take two weeks, and um, six weeks later, <laughs> I finally get a call that the job is done. And I go take a look at it, and it's all milky, and it looks like it has dusty, powdery stuff all over it, and it's pretty much a horrible job. And you know, I told the guy, you know, I've read reviews that you do great restoration work for these cars being restored, and this is not great work. So he said, ah, oh, we'll do it over, no problem. And, you know, another three weeks later, I get another call, and finally it, it's looking, you know, where I can accept it and say, yeah. You can see the results of that first batch in vlog 12, episode 12. So I'll put a link right here. When I picked that batch up, I walked out the door knowing what the restoration shop guy had meant by he's going to try to see what he can get away with. Second batch of stuff was much bigger than the first batch. So I brought him just this whole big box full of stuff, mostly nuts, bolts, washers, screws. There were two different plates going on though, actually three. There was some uh, zinc chromate, some zinc, and some chrome. You know, and I showed him the whole deal, pretty sure I made him clear what I was after, and he said, uh, 250 bucks. And I'm like, hey, that's the same price, you know? I guess I'm getting the returning customer discount or something. Anyway, six more weeks go by, and I get the call, it's ready. So I go to pick it up, and he's trying to charge me 480 bucks for this stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute, Henry said 250 bucks. So I'm talking to the lady at the counter, talking to the shop foreman. Henry's on vacation, so can't go anywhere with this thing. I'm not about to pay 480 for a batch. I was told 250. So I leave without my stuff. Eventually the guy comes back and we talk about it and I end up paying 325 bucks for this second batch that you can see in episode 14. So in vlog 14 you can see the second batch of stuff. So, 325 bucks for that. So, I realize, you know, I'm done with this guy. Dick, you're fired! Thank you. I finally went with one of the guys that the original restoration shop mentioned, a place called High Tech Plating. It was also nearby, and uh, I went and saw the owner, showed him the, my next batch of stuff. It was a pretty big batch of stuff. One of the items in the batch was my fuel level sensor, you know, the float. And, you know, with the moving parts and the float that doesn't detach, he's looking at it and he's like, yeah, I don't really want to plate that because some of the cleaners are going to get, um, you know, trapped inside here and then it's going to cross-contaminate into my plating tank. So, I don't want the fuel level sensor. I brought him my batch and he was gone. Um, the shop foreman's looking at all my stuff. He 
sees a window regulator I have, says, no problema. I showed him the fuel level sensor, you know, the float, and he said, oh, no problema, we be careful. And so he did the float that the owner was saying, oh, I don't want to do that. I picked this batch up, and it was beautiful. I mean, it was shiny. And the stuff I got from the first guy that did the first two batches, that stuff looked good to me, and it was just the first time I've ever used a plater, so to me it was like, yeah, that's great. Um, but by the time I picked up my first batch from the new guys, high-tech plating, everything was so much shinier. Let me show you an example of that. Let me get out my little box here full of extra nuts and bolts. One's on the left, first plater, kind of dull, no shine to them. That guy, I believe, dunked them in a basket and, you know, rolled a basket through the, the chemical. And, you know, and then he charged me all the money he could think of. One's on the right, nice and shiny. That guy dips them in a, from a wire hanger and has a reasonable price. Way better job, way better price. This new plater rocks. Yeah, I did some research online and I found out some of these guys, what they do is they'll put the stuff inside a basket and um, it'll either rotate through the plating stuff, you know, everything coming in contact with each other, um, or they'll dunk it in a tank um, sometimes there's things on top, maybe there's washers stacked on top of each other, um, you know, by ch random chance. And sometimes they don't plate as well, or they get stuck in a mucky area and things turn out milky. Well, the new guy, high-tech plating, what he does is he wraps everything on a wire and it gets dipped into a big bucket or, you know, a tank or a vat. And so nothing's ever going to come into contact. There's no chance of washers landing on each other and not really plating well or getting stuck at the bottom where there's murkiness. So one of the things I learned there is the method is important. So if you've got a guy that's just dumping stuff into a basket, um, you, you want to avoid that method. You know, ask for the, the plating job where everything is separated and dipped in. Um, I'm finding that that stuff's turning out really nice. Um, and also, when I picked up this first batch from the new guy, a lot cheaper. This guy charges real prices, and uh, I'm going to show you all the stuff. So from here, let's move on over to the bench top where I can lay all this stuff out and show you what it looks like, show you what it is, what are all these different parts, and yeah, let's go take a look. Okay, my third batch of plating things. I've got a new plater. This guy seems like he did a good job. It was hassle-free and less than half the cost of what the last guy charged for the same amount of stuff. This guy here, that's, uh, you, some of you might recognize that as being a plate that goes on top of the engine between the engine and tranny. This guy here is for the um, clutch line where the clutch hydraulic hose meets the steel hydraulic line. This guy here, spare tire hold down bolt. Couple other clutch pieces here. There's a throw out bearing retainer clip and the fork pivot clip. This guy here, that guy holds down the brake proportioning valve. These two puppies are for the rear shocks. This bracket here is for the radiator reservoir overflow tank. I might be getting a new one of those when um, you know I buy a bottle, might come with it. I don't know yet, it's not here. Uh, let's see what we got down here. Now the brake proportioning valve came with a slew of things that screwed into it and that's what all these guys are. Up here we've got the coil and ballast resistor bracket. Bunch of nuts and bolts down here. Brake master cylinder reservoir, hold down bolts, washers, stuff like that. These guys here hold down the, uh, yeah, these guys can be flipped around. These guys here hold down the metal rail that holds the top C-pillar weather strip to the car. This guy here, don't know, sorry. This guy here, this little bracket here, that guy holds the fuel rollover valve to the firewall. And then these giant looking like sheet metal screw deals, those are for headlamp buckets. And the very long screws and those washers next to them, those are all for headlamp buckets. Uh, this stud here is for the clutch master cylinder. I got a brand new master cylinder for the clutch, but the stud that came with it is too short, so I got new ones. All these little washers 
go with these little screws. These are all brake master cylinder hold down items. These black plated items are, uh, the spring is for the accelerator pedal and the two bolts with the giant washers, those are for the rear seat backing plate. Uh, the four flange nuts, I don't know, probably brake master cylinder reservoir bracket. These tiny little screws, those are all for the little trims that hold the headlamps to the buckets. The Nabco, of course, is the brake proportioning valve. And here we have a bracket that holds the uh, wiper washer reservoir to the firewall. And then these guys here, these rails hold a felt weather strip to the rear quarter cards. That's what those are. So they came off the car zinc plated, you'll see on my weather strip video. So I wanted to get them back to the way they were. So there we have it. Just got back from the platers with my fourth plating batch. Uh, this is probably the biggest batch I've ever done and it was cheapest. So I've got a new plater, charges real prices, not crazy. Like that other guy wanted a hundred bucks each on my axles. That guy just didn't want the job. Gonna lay all this stuff out. I need a big space. This calls for Instabench. There's my fourth plating batch. Bling for car guys. You know, I bought a bunch of evapo rust over the holidays. That shit works. I mean, the rust just dissolves. Gone. I was a little excited about that and I went ahead and rounded up all the rusty nuts, bolts, washers, and screws in my shop, threw them in there, and you know what, like 90% of them came out beautiful. So I said, this stuff's going to the platers. And so a lot of what you see here is superfluous stuff that's just gonna go in my nuts, bolts, washers, and screws collection. But stuff that actually came off the car, I'll point out. So yeah, this black oxide batch is pretty much most of just uh, the evapo rust batch. We've got uh, oil pan bolts here. You know, if stuff was black when it came off the car, that's how I replated it. A lot of these are trim screws, you know, little plastic trim pieces, dash po dashboard parts. These little guys look exactly like the wiper arm nut, but they were black oxide, right? And the wiper arm nut is kind of like a satin nickel. So they're clearly not that. Did some zinc chromate at the platers. Lots of screws. That little guy there is from the coil. Got some unknown sway bar washers here. Not sure what they fit. If you recognize those, let me know what they are. They're different because the one hole is smaller than the other one. One of them is also concave, the other one's flat. Somebody needs those, I got them. All nice and pretty for you. We got a window regulator here. This was extra sitting in my, my parts shed, so I don't know if I'm gonna put it on the car. We'll see. It wasn't in the plan to remove my window regulators. I didn't want to mess with the glass. Got a whole bunch of uh, six by 10 and 12 bolts. A lot of them are flange bolts. Some of them have the built-in lock washer, all nice and shiny. You know, I gotta tell you, unwrapping this batch, man, I, I think I know how my wife feels when she busts out like a necklace or earrings at Christmas or birthday or something like that. You know how the girls are all, ooh, pretty, ooh. Well, I do believe I know exactly how she feels. When I'm opening this stuff up, man, I've got a whole bunch of shiny nuts and bolts for my car. This is man bling for car guys, you know? Open this stuff and you're like, yeah, yeah, that looks awesome. Exhaust hanger, big long bolt for like a alternator or something. That guy there is the clutch slave widget, along with this guy. Yeah, some of you might recognize a fuel filler. And there are some front pulley bolts. Had a couple extras, so I played them all. I'm sure I'll find a person who needs those. Spare tire bolt. And then there's a huge batch of 6x8. Those might be 6x10. These guys here are for the motor mount, so they're all pretty. These here are the clutch slave hose. It's also the exact same bolt as what connects the brake hoses to the master cylinder and brake proportioning valve. Shitload of washers. Again, a lot of this is just extra stuff from my shop. 
cleaned it up with the evapo rust and now I've got quite a supply of stuff. This guy here, fuel door, part of the latch, along with those two screws, and that guy there. These guys here are part of the coil mounting setup, I believe. Either that or it's a wire organization device, I forget which. There's a little hose holder, or cable holder. Do a little plasti dip on it, and it'll be good as, good as new. Right as rain. Anybody need a flywheel nut? There's a pretty one for you. Plating batch number five has come back from the plater. Got a whole bunch of stuff, over 500 pieces. It was less than 400 bucks. So starting up here in the corner, I got uh, the horn and related hardware, all the little screws, the bracket, flat washers, bolts, lock washers, nuts, etc. Fuel filler, that's, an act that's actually an extra. And then up here, there are the relay shells that go to the various different electrical relays. Plated all my hose clamps, so there's a boatload of hose clamps. Over here is my gas cap, my original equipment gas cap. Gonna use it. This little bracket is for the fuel evaporation tank. It sits on top of the gas tank. Gonna use it. Uh, these bolts here, those are the front control arm bolts. Now the control arm's already on the car with a brand new bolt because I couldn't find these when I needed them, but now I have them. This little bracket is for the voltage regulator. These guys are little window, you know, the glass slides in these little channels here, you know, for the, the windows. Uh, speaking of windows, this little setup is for the rear quarter glass, holds the rear quarter glass to the window crank mechanism. That little nut there is for the hood release cable. This little clip is also for the hood release cable. These two thin nuts here are for the window wiper arms. This assortment of clips and bolts here, along with the little lock washers, those go to the door lock cylinders and the window crank. Right, these tiny little buggers here. Those screws hold down the identification badge that goes on the firewall. Screws next to it? Don't know. Couldn't tell you. Lots of wire loom holding clips that I had replated. Don't know if I'm going to use them or not, but at least I have the option. These two little retainers go on the wiper motor rubber washers. But that goes in between the washer. More on that later. Fuel sending unit. Got two of them. Both have been tested. They work great. I'm going to test them again now that they're plated. Got a lot of black oxide plating done. Over here are the retaining clips for the washer nozzles. Got Two from the silver car, two from the green car, and two that I picked up aftermarket from a body shop. And then all these other screws are various interior panel screws. There's the you know door card clips, lots of other little horseshoe clips and J clips. Now some of the J clips were plated zinc chromate. Not sure why Mazda had two different platings on that, but they did, so I reproduced it. These here hold the cowl on, the little scuttle panel on. These bolts here are for the fuel tank. It holds the fuel tank in the boot. This array of bolts and washers are from window regulators. And the large stuff, five window regulators, three fronts, two rears, uh, the related channels. And that's going to do it for today's episode. We're going to wrap it up here. That brings us to the question of the day. Let's Talk Shop needs a logo. Are any of you guys fancy with the artwork? Or who do you know? Tell me about it in the comment section down below. Coming up next, weather stripping. <laughs> no, really. I know I've been talking about a weather strip video for over a year now. Like a year and a half, I think. But anyway, it really is next. We're going to start with the trunk weather strip. And we'll take it from there. We're also going to do doors. I think it's going to be two episodes. We'll find out when that comes down to the editing booth. Okay, so uh, give us a like on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. There's some Instagramming going on. If you like what we do here, you want to help us out just a little bit, visit us at patreon.com. Other things coming up soon? Fuel tank. Electrical. I've also got some brake line and fuel lines. Those are coming up. Thanks for watching Let's Talk Shop. 
If you're new here, subscribe, watch our previous episodes, and don't miss out on the upcoming weather strip, fuel tank, and electrical videos. Peace out, brother.